Hello, my name is Neil Sang. I'm a researcher in geoinformation science at the Swedish University of Agricultural Science, and I'll be moderating this session. Um, the rules you've just seen, but in case anybody didn't didn't see that, so essentially um, the questions were, had to go into the chat room, and I will take a, a look through those and pick out the most the most common ones that you have to then put to to the speakers. If we get through all of that and we still have time, then we'll have a more uh, open chat. And in terms of how it's going to run, so we have we have three speakers, and I'm going to play each video in turn first in in one go, and then I will be making notes of your questions in the chat room as we go through that. And when we've played all three videos, then we will um, go to a rounded a rounded discussion. We have, as I said, we have three speakers, uh, three videos for you today. Uh, the first is uh, called Grown in Singapore. Now that is narrated, I believe, by somebody called Ting, but, this, but the project is led by Jessica Deal from the National University of Singapore. Then we have Trees for Bello, Horizontal Metropolitan Region, that's presented by Anna Clara Mora from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, Brazil. And finally, Trees for Rio de Janeiro Metropolitan Region, presented by Thiago Marino from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Okay, so without further ado, I will go straight on to the videos. Hi everyone, this is Tim from National University of Singapore. Our project is growing in Singapore. With the decreasing of the agricultural land in Singapore over past decades, nowadays the area of agricultural land in Singapore is less than 1%. Additionally, Singapore's food production at this stage only accounts for less than 10% of consumption, which indicates a severe food security issue. Once more, the land use in Singapore urban area is extremely limited. Land scarcity makes the food issue more challengeable. Therefore, the problem is how to develop design strategy contributed to the multifunctional urban land uses that integrates rather than separating agriculture culture from other land uses for the sustainability of Singapore future, and how to redesign both green and grey spaces into productive landscape. So in this project, we are focusing on the study area that cover a one kilometer buffer area of canal network between Marina Bay and the central catchment in Singapore. So as for our goal, we aim to achieve the following six requirements, which is centered by social awareness and linkage to food, multifunction land use, community needs, and a new urban infrastructure typology combined with agriculture. Our geodesign process could be concluded as two main phases. Initially, we are trying to collect types of relevant data, carry out a detailed analysis of the problem, and sort out the relevant data of key concern. Then we are about to propose possible solutions and assess the impact. Considering whether the problem has been solved and whether the sustainability requirements can be met. So with this kind of continuous iterations, we constantly deliberate the design, hoping to achieve the reasonable, feasible and forward looking purpose of the continuously changing time dimension. So by 2035, Singapore will have achieved the goal of 30 by 30, which means Singaporeans will have more opportunity to experience planting for themselves. Food production will be integrated in their life. By 2050, green infrastructure will be integrated with the buildings, which makes the increase of total area of green space. Therefore, throughout the whole geodesign process of our project, it is obvious that the most beneficial impact of both early adopter and late adopter SDG is number 10, sustainable cities and communities. Meanwhile, that of non-adopter SDG is number seven, decent work and economic growth. So to achieve the goal of growing in Singapore, the method of this project could be described as urban agriculture in different landscape typologies. Not only do we consider about the 
food security issue, but also we take the urban ecology, social activity, and land using experience into consideration. Therefore, the overall project image is about multifunction urban agriculture that is highly related to the urban social activity. Within these project images, we are focusing on 10 different urban typologies, including urban parks and open green spaces, degraded forest, common space in highly density residential area, unused and underutilized space, special population, underutilized build structure, water and drainage network, commercial area, streetscape, and institutional zone. Eventually, focusing on the comparison between the current situation and recommended plan, the most obvious feature that lies in the fact is the is the appearance of the different types of urban agriculture related green infrastructure that contributed to the increasing total area of the green space in future Singapore. Yeah, that's all of our team growing in Singapore project presentation. Thanks for your listening. Okay, thank you. And then the next one was Trees for Belo Horizonte Metropolitan Region. I'm Professor Ana Clara Moura from Federal University of Minas Gerais, Brazil. I'm part of the group that is developing the project Trees for Metropolitan Regions, and I'm presenting the case study Trees for Belo Horizonte Metropolitan Region. Belo Horizonte is located in the southeast of Brazil, close to São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, and it is in the north of Iron Quadrangle area. Iron Quadrangle is an important area because it's the base of our economic resources due to iron mining. But it's also an area of conflicts of interest because of urban growth, cultural heritage landscapes, and very important environmental resources. Because of the topography characterized by hills that divide the area in biomes, we have repressing vegetation in the top of iron hills, Atlantic forest in the south, and savanna in the north of the area. The urban landscape is very dense, with 6 million inhabitants, a very verticalized and densified area. But we also have tradition in qualified architecture, from Baroque to the modern architecture of Nehemiah, and this is me in the top of Nehemiah building. So as part of the group, we worked with eight systems proposed by IGC, but we added tourism and we added carbon credit system proposed as a specific system. From the list of the systems, we defined the main variables and constructed the same collection of maps to all Brazilian case studies. We used the platform called GIS Collab, that we say GIS Collab, developed under my supervision by Christian Freitas in Geoprocessing Laboratory. GIS Collab is based on WebGIS plus spatial data infrastructure according to OGC standards to give support to co-creation in geocollaboration. In the first day, we do reading enrichment, that is the use of annotation tool. Symbolize it according to the systems to present alerts, information about potentialities and vulnerabilities. Then in day two, three and four of the workshop, we use the dialogues tool to propose ideas according to non-adopter, late adopter and early adopter. From the ideas, participants write dialogues and they can vote. We also constructed a script presented in WIDGATS to calculate the percentage of increasement of areas for carbon credits, together with number of trees and so on. So this is our project. When we analyze the sustainable development objectives, we see the increment of the performances, mainly in early adopter proposal. Here, we did it different because we didn't construct the national metrics but we are presenting the metrics from the project. An important tool developed was the script to dynamic calculation of the proposed areas for carbon credit, together with the number of trees and other metrics. We use it 
the space maps, the Crowther Nature Biome Map, and global above ground and below ground biomass carbon density maps. From this script, we arrive to a table of rates of local specific properties so that we can control the increasement, the proposed increasement of 30% of the areas. Together with this script, we present to the participants the maps, surface temperature, vegetation, and landscape ecology metrics that are area core, stepping stones, and shape factor. With this support, they can, they can create and control the performance of new areas for carbon credit. When we compare the way we worked with the other Brazilian case studies, we see that our process was characterized by negotiation, agreements, and votes. So this is our project, the current situation, characterized by alerts of potentialities and vulnerabilities, and the negotiated, the negotiated final design for 2050, early adopter that is composed by all the systems in the increasement of more than 30% of carbon credit areas. This is the list of the participants, and we must thank CNPq and FAPEMIG for the support. These are the data that we use it, and the key software was GIS Collab, developed by our lab, together with Christian Freitas. We thank you. Hi, my name is Thiago Marino. I am professor at the Department of Geography at Rural Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And I will present the project Trees for Rio de Janeiro Metropolitan Region, which is part of the project uh, Trees for Brazil, presented by Ana Clara Moura uh, from Federal University of Minas Gerais. So here we briefly present the study area, Rio de Janeiro Metropolitan Region, which is the second pole of demographic consumption and economic activities in the country. And it concentrates 90% uh, of the state population. So some of these pictures are worldwide famous in terms of tourism. Uh, in terms of requirements, uh, our biggest goals were basically to increase vegetation in 30% by 2050 and contemplates all 10 systems in, uh, from geodesign methodology. By 2035, basically projects were based in these three uh, main uh, systems and by 2050 there are an increase of systems as you can see here. In terms of methodology, we had a 10 participant work group and we had four meetings, virtual meetings, and basically in day one, we had the reading enrichment uh, stage uh, where we could geolocate and indicate potentialities and vulnerabilities uh, in this region. Uh, and basically we used a G web based GIS called Vicon Saga. Uh, for day two, we have the construction of ideas for non adapter uh, for 2035 and 2050 using another platform, web platform, a GIS Collab, and using the Dialogues too. Uh, on day three, we had the construction of ideas for late adopter for 2035 and 2050, also using the Dialogues too, and uh, we could define the goal to increase by 30% the carbon credit until 2050. Uh, we have a, a widget in this platform where we can measure and see in real time by the time we create green areas uh, the impact over the carbon credit so we can control this uh, percentual. And finally in day four we had the construction of ideas for early adopter for 2035 and 2050 and through the dialogues too also could comment and vote debate on these projects. So all of these pictures were taken for the G's collab platform and you can see the evolution of the scenarios for each year and which modality of adoption. Also we can note that by observing this matrix for all the scenarios uh, comparing the 
in project impacts over the 17 sustainable development goals. We can see that we come from a negative scenario, scoring a total score at minus seven for the current situation, 2021. And as long as we go for 2035, uh, the total score is uh, 44 points, and we can see more uh, positive projects over the rows and the, over the columns. And finally, 2050, we can see that there are many uh, sustainable goals being attended and many systems. So we can reach a goal of a uh, total score of 239. Same happens as long as we come from non-adopter scenario to late adopter and early scenario, this total value escalates from 65 points passing through 190 and then 239. And if we observe the, uh, the scenarios uh, considering the, 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 the innovations for early adopter scenario, we can see that the best uh, occasion, and as long as we go down in terms of innovation, the, these value decreases. And finally, as we can see from this chart that uh, Escalating from a non adopter scenario to a early adopter scenario, we can come from zero uh, percent, uh, no significant uh, increase of carbon credit, just having here conserving the existing areas, trees for these areas. But as long as we escalate to late adopter scenario, we reach over 15 percent. Uh, which means over 103,000 trees. And finally, reaching our main goal, which was reaching 30% of uh, credit carbon. Uh, we can see here that that scenario for 2050, uh, in early adopter scenario, uh, we reached uh, over 33% 30, 30 of credit carbon, meaning over 28 million trees. Finally, this is the project participants list. Uh, we would like to thank all the fellows who collaborated to this project and also uh, thank for the funding sources who collaborated to make this project possible. Thank you all. Okay, great. Well, um, I was just looking to make sure that the, uh, the respondents were there before I put questions to them. I can see on my screen, I can see Anna Clara and I can see Thiago. Uh, is Jessica there? Are you there, Jessica? Yes. Yes, hello. Oh, hi. Um, so first of all, am I pronouncing your names correctly? Anybody? Yes? Okay, great. Thank you. Right. So um, thank you all for some very interesting um, contributions there. Uh, the projects are diverse, um, but I'm going to try and see if we can find some, some connections between them as well. When I looked at this, start with the with yourself, Jessica, um, in terms of the, the growth in Singapore. Now, this this conference has been a, a bit different. This project has been different because we asked to look at the SDG. So that the, the, they introduced the SDG as a new component for this. And I was quite struck by the fact that um, your video made clear there was a there was a tension to some extent between SGD 10 in terms of community and SDG 7 in terms of economy. Was that something you, you struggled with in your project? Yes, and actually, so I had 26 students in my design studio that were attached to this geo design project. And they were divided into, we defined 10 landscape typologies. And so they were presented in the video, if, if you recall. And um, one of the, important things that they grappled with in thinking about different landscape typologies that is that integrating productive landscapes into one typology might have more of an economic focus and less of a social or even um, um, envir or environmental focus, whereas in it, integrating it into another typology might have more of a social um, and, and or an ecological focus. So depending on the landscape typology that they were tasked with, um, there was a different um, 
um, I guess, suitability or best fit approach. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so different groups took a different angle on it. Did you then try to come up with a single common, um, common design that offset those? How did you bring those different angles together? So, unfortunately in the end we we didn't because the students end up doing individual design projects even within the 10 typologies there were two or three students doing independent projects within them so for example there was one typology for commercial areas and one student focused on rooftop agriculture and one looked at actually um integrating with metro entryways. Um, so they're like big void areas going into the metro. So they are very different projects. And because of the short length of the design studio and the fact that unfortunately we were teaching exclusively online and all of my students were um, actually in China, we happen to have an entire batch of students from China and I'm my co-tutor and I for the studio are in Singapore. You know, there's only so much that you can get through in a semester. So we sort of ended just with the individual projects. And in the end, I had them create for the geo design. I had them create a comprehensive map that you saw in the the presentations to show well what would happen if your your individual projects were inter implemented across all potential um, spaces suitable for your particular like. If it was, um, again, like a commercial rooftop, all the potential commercial rooftops, if it's, you know, a waterway, the entire waterway, then they came up with those those different um, intervention maps, um, but just sort of at a more generic uh, regional scale. Yeah. OK, thank you. And I'd like to use that to, to segue. Um, to Anna Clara and ask, so if we're talking about this multifunctionality issue and, and the thing that, that maybe stands out with yours was that it has to work in so many different areas, so to different biotopes and so on. Um, and how did you manage to, to deal with that? And how does that fit in with the geo design, the IGC approach of the 10 systems? Yes, tomorrow I'm going to present the whole case study with the 13 metropolitan region. But we had to produce the data to all these areas and they are very different. They are very different biomes because we have Atlantic forest, savanna, we have Western field and we have also the, the Amazonic forest in this collection of uh, metropolitan region. So the first, the first step was to organize the same collection of data to all the case studies and to prepare the platform that's called GIS Collab and give support to the professors that this that accepted to be part of the experiment. It's not possible to compare the case studies because we are very different. We are a continental country. So there is no use in comparing Belo Horizonte with Rio de Janeiro, for example, that Chad was there. So we compare ourselves with ourselves. So we compare if we develop it during the process. When I compare the performance of my students from the first day to the last day, I can say that they understood the whole of the sustainable goals. They understand the whole of carbon credit. They understand how to propose new areas for this kind of projects. And we developed the tool during the process because there were some uh, tools that we developed according to, to the experiments that because we started in February. And then we did the first workshops and we invited more people to continue to work with us. And during the process, we changed the things. For example, the sustainable goals analysis. Uh, the, the students proposed their ideas and after they had already finished the workshop, I computed the points and then I, I, I showed them the results and they said, we wanted to know this before because we wanted to, to know about our performance before you, you the, the final result. Because we wanted to know that we are not doing well about this goal and this goal and this goal. So in the last workshop that was Salvador case study that we are going to present this, this evening, uh, we created a kind of uh, 
I will get the why people are proposing their ideas, they will get discounting which uh, sustainable development goal you are achieving, and how is your performance, so that you can learn with the experiment. So we call this the, the whole of this whole experiment a transformative learning experiment because it was constructed during the process. Very interesting. Yes, I suspect because the way we had a similar um, approach whereby the designs were made and it is in terms of my own uh, area designs were made and then we did the calculations afterwards with just a subset of students. And I suspect that after this conference, I will receive a bunch of emails from students saying, hey, <laughs> why didn't we do this first? I, I think it's a very relevant, relevant point. Um, yeah. Now, in terms of in terms of those um, those numbers, I wanted to ask uh, I wanted to ask Thiago, when when we looked at your your final slide of the SDG points, um, it's quite a positive picture. So, at, at, at least compared to some of the other projects I've seen, which are maybe negatives apart from the kind of early adopter scenario, most of most of your scenarios, Thiago, they they seemed to have a, have some positive angle of it, of improvement. So how optimistic are you um, for for these trends? Yeah, that, that is how you can see it's very positive. You know, uh, it, it was an interesting project because uh, the first challenge was to assemble together the, the the collaborators and and one interesting point that. Uh, uh, we were studying Rio de Janeiro metropolitan region, and I am in a group of 10, 15, uh, we started like 20 people, 20 collaborators. Uh, uh, me and like two or three were the only people who know about the, the place. We got fellows from another cities and they really didn't know the area. So, but, but one very important thing that Clara provided us for this exercise, this project, was uh, that, uh, thematic maps that uh, data set. So we had uh, like 40 thematic maps and we had to make an exercise like uh, turning on and off and the, the, these layers and uh, trying to understand the region, you know, especially these uh, collaborators that didn't know the, the region. So uh, this was the, the first exercise, the first challenge, but the, the, it was very interesting. Despite of Rio being so famous in terms of tourism, and we tried to explore this, you know, this section, this uh, system, uh, people didn't really know about the city, the specific points and issues. So I tried to put the picture, the whole picture for them, and then they tried to navigate through the layers and, and understand the city. Uh, so, but uh, after all, they, they were very optimistic, as you can see for, for the matrix, the results. And uh, uh, they tried to understand the city and put in the reading the, uh, and the knowledge base, building the knowledge base phase, the, the phase, stage one, know the issues, and then we try to propose the projects. Uh, we lean it. Uh, very specifically in the green areas. Uh, Rio, this region, we have a lot of big, uh, huge uh, green areas too, but the, the challenge is to avoid the population uh, to get inside and build their houses, you know, because we have this uh, social problem. The rich are on the top and the, the poor are right here. We don't have this. We have this, uh, uh, this gap, huge gap. And uh, the poor uh, are trying to stay uh, close to their works. Everything is connected. We know that there is a, a systemic problem uh, based on transportation and uh, social problems and politics. Uh, so they try to establish their houses in the near from the rich population where they provide their service. So we had to. Uh, know the big pictures and, and try to understand the, the, the situation and build project. And for a group, despite of them, didn't know very well the area, they tried to build very good projects and optimistic in terms of social uh, 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 social problems, trying to uh, solute this problem. 
and for the green areas, you know. And uh, this was the, the final result in terms of uh, quantity of number. Uh, it was the final result, you know. It, uh, it was very positive, uh, but it was the, the, the result of what they imagined, they proposed. Uh, it was very, very interesting. The, the, the points that they didn't know well the area, it was just studying by the maps and I tried to tell them about some specific points and problems and issues uh, and that it was a, that the final result. But I think that's a that's a very important point actually is the degree to which your, your participants or students do or do not know their areas and that brings me to a question that's just come in the chat um, in terms of how this connects with remote working and organizing these courses remotely did you all organize the courses remotely and how did that impact with this question of whether or not the, the participants knew the area um can uh, we look sorry i'll just go i'll bring in jessica again there and we'll we'll come back to you chago jessica please that was really it was really challenging as i mentioned my students were in um this um, year batch happened to all be students from China and they had never been to Singapore. So they've now come to Singapore for our two year program. So it was really difficult um, to get them to dive into site analysis and to get to know Singapore intimately. Um, so they, they got to know it from a bird's eye view. Um, I have to say that if anyone is familiar with the Miro app, uh, it was immensely, um, we could not have done the geo design project without Miro app. It's, it's a virtual whiteboard space. Um, so check it out. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not um, getting paid to advertise for them, but um, it, it, it enabled me to, um, uh, so I did the lectures through Zoom, but then I would have them all go onto the, the whiteboard space and get into their groups and interact remotely that way where they could um, organize their site analysis and, and, and interact that way. And I, I actually um, put sticky notes and created grids and, and um, created a framework based on um, um, the Carl Steinitz, you know, the geo design framework going through the three iterations. And I actually found it easier to get them to understand the geo design process because I laid it out visually for them there and required them to populate the different parts of the process. And I was able to kind of put sticky notes and interject where I didn't think they were going deep enough or they weren't making the, the connections or the leaps the way or doing the iteration back and forth the way that I thought would be helpful. So in some ways working remotely was immensely challenging. And in some ways it, it enabled us to actually work in a more intimate and collaborative way in a virtual space yeah it's been an interesting uh, side effect of the, of the pandemic speaking of applications uh, anna clara your software was that was that a response to the pandemic issues or was that something you were doing anyway it was a, it was ready for last year it was a product of a, a phd thesis of one of my students christian freitas and it was not planned to be used just virtually. Uh, we generally get together in a room. We, it's a web-based platform, but being together in a room is quite different because we can have uh, discussions, interactions, and this kind of condition that we don't have when we're, when we're working virtually. So the platform was ready last year and I had already uh, tested it in also in difficult uh, situations as favelas, as slums here in Brazil, but going there with the platform and working there with people. When the pandemic time started, we all had to change our way of teaching. And I believe that it was because of the pandemic time that these 14 universities accepted to, to work together because we had to change everything. We had to construct new materials. We have to rebuild our, our lessons. And I just started to call the colleagues and said, do you accept to be part of an experiment in your case study, in your place? I will construct the data. I will provide the platform and you can put this experiment in your lessons. And all of them accepted because we're changing the way of teaching here. 
So I believe the pandemic time, that's very bad for us here in Brazil. We are not okay here. But this pandemic period uh, allowed us to be more together, closer to people. And the only thing that I miss is the field camp because we go with the students to the place, we, we visit the place, we discuss and we feel people. And this part we were not able to do. But for this experiment of this year, uh, working totally virtually was something very good. Interesting. That seems like a perfect point to bring Thiago back in. Uh, I, I assume you were the one of the people that Anna Clara telephoned. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was one of the, these guys. And I, I would like to thank Anna because uh, thanks to her, the, the, her hard work and her, her team, actually, she has a lot of very good uh, uh, collaborators. And she provided us uh, all the, the, the stuff, the thematic maps and the platform that we use it very well. And thanks to that, we, we were able to, to build our pro projects to, to, to draw the, the, the polygons and the, the points and make comments. The platform was really very, very useful. And uh, apart from this, just the stage one, the, the enrichment of the knowledge base, we, we use another approach. We use a platform that I developed uh, here uh, with my group, along with my group, and it is is as well so I tried to bring it up and bring it in with our participants so it was really interesting the approach that every group used it, it was different and uh, but uh, the core of this project was victim thanks for for the, the the hard work of Anna's group you know the thematic maps and the GIS uh, collab platform it's a really hard work but the the, the results are uh, very good. Uh, I would like to thank her for all. I just gave her the bounding box, you know, uh, the Rio de Janeiro, Janeiro bounding box, and she gave us all the projects and all the maps. So it was very easy thanks to her collaborators and her hard work. Yeah, very good. Very impressive. And, and in your case, um, you were using this with a, a range of, it wasn't just students, but it was various professionals from, from different disciplines. Yeah. Now that brings in an interesting problem in terms of what they're used to doing right so so yeah. how did how did you find they interacted with the different softwares that you had them using yeah we have to show them the uh, videos uh, Anna made a lot of videos tutorials and i, I made the same for my platform the, the the one our group developed and we did very well that it was a, a, a one of the challenges to introduce then uh, uh, geographic system uh, concepts. It's very basic and, and today we can make something very user friendly. This is the real uh, challenge for us. I am a, a coder, you know, I am a developer. So the biggest issue, the biggest challenge is to make it easier for, for the, the user, the end user, you know, the, the final user. Uh, so they have to come to focus on their major problem, known on the technical problem, you know. and. Uh, uh, my, the platform that we provided her along with the videos, the tutorials, I, I think it was very useful. It did very well, uh, not only with the GIS based platform, but the virtual uh, uh, platform. Uh, we used Google Meeting, Google Meet, and it worked well, very well. So it, it, I would rather work with my team in a room, inside a room, uh, talking, you know, discussing, but uh, thanks. To these platforms, we were able to gather people, not just from Rio, from my region, but from another states, you know, next to this, uh, all this structure. So it was a pity uh, because of the context scenario, the, the pandemic scenario, but at least we could join these people, you know, it was, it was nice, very nice experience. Okay. Okay. One of the interesting um, things with this is yeah, that you I can, so yes, sure. So, yes, uh, the, the platform that Chago developed is based on VGI, Volunteer Geographic Information. So it was very interesting because people would use their mobiles to do the first step and then continue in the other steps in our platform, okay? 
And mainly, we are talking about the E generation. These, these young people, they are very connected, so they don't have any difficulties in web platforms and, and connections and digital stuff. So uh, sometimes people were working in their own projects, and I went to the platform to see how they were working to other case studies, not mine, but the, to the colleagues' they, uh, case studies, just to see how they were working. And I, it was so interesting to see how this each generation is able to do everything very rapid. And it, it's not a problem for them. <laughs> yeah. I know some of the students on my course this year actually said they, they preferred the remote working. They, they thought it was easier to interact with each other, which <laughs> I can't really relate to, to be honest. But um, so that's good to know. So we've had the two minute warning. Um, it just remi remains for me to thank all of our speakers for their excellent videos and their participation in the discussion and Miran for saving the day when my internet fell over. Um, is there any comments from the audience before we close? We've got about 60 seconds before we get kicked out. I can't see any faces, so I... I... No? I can see a few faces here. Um, it's great to see all here on a list uh, to screen. So I've noticed a lot of names and thank you so much for participating. It's great. So thank you again. And um, I will do my best to summarize this for the, the discussions tomorrow.